Hi, everybody. Uh, my name's Jonathan. I'm uh, QSpark as well. Uh, QSpark deals, as you heard, uh, in high frequency trading. Today, I want to talk to you about cash warming in general and some rule of thumb when you try to implement in, in your program. Um, I'm going to show you some pseudo code. Uh, one of the issues we encounter is critical code, which is executed rarely. Uh, we have this example to illustrate the problem. Uh, here, frequently executed code uh, is marked in red. Uh, frequently executed code is, gen in general, closer to the CPU cache and is therefore executed faster. Uh, when buy stocks uh, is called, uh, it, it, there is, it will be an added del delay in loading the code for, uh, to the CPU cache. And as a result, when, when we want to perform that critical code, it will take longer to execute. Uh, to change that, we need to somehow execute buy stocks in an artificial way uh, without actually buying stocks. Um, well, in a more uh, formal way, cache warming means trying to keep code and data near the cache by accessing the memory it is stored in an artificial way. Uh, so let's try to warm the code from the previous example and try to warm buy stocks. Uh, the code that was added is marked as, as bold. Uh, we added a boolean to indicate if we are warming the buy code. An additional call to buy oil uh, to buy as stocks was added, which will initiate the warming process. A at first look, it looks like we seem to have accomplished uh, part of our goal. The code to buy oil stocks is uh, to buy stocks is most likely in the CPU cache at the time of the real buy oil buy stocks is called. Uh, on the other hand we are interfering with the other parts of the program from using the CPU cache. Uh, in real life, we would probably not call uh, the buy stocks uh, constantly, but use a frequency of some sort, maybe 10 times a second, uh, not to hog the CPU. Uh, so now let's take a look at the buy stocks code. Um, here is a possible implementation for buy stocks with the newly added Boolean parameter. Uh, the question we encounter is how to best use the Boolean to avoid modifying the program state. Uh, let's try a naive uh, approach first. Uh, here, uh, we have the Boolean and we are forwarding it to all the function calls which may alter the program state. Uh, we also added an if uh, to avoid incrementing the counter at the end. Um, the problem we introduce with the added if is misprediction. Uh, most of the calls to the function now originate from the cache warming calls. Uh, the branch prediction will therefore predict we never increment the counter. Uh, this actually slows the execution of the function when we need it the most. So when we actually buy, want to buy stocks, we will have a misprediction in the added if. The conclusion from this is that code that knows it is warmable, that is being warmed, is not warmable. Um, okay, so how, what can we do to change that? So, uh, we use, we, first we remove the if. Now the counter was also changed in, into an array of two counters. Index zero in the array will provide us the real state, and index one will, in the array will provide us the cache warming state. We use the Boolean as an index into the array to avoid branch prediction. Uh, the added bonus is we get to warm the data as well. Uh, most likely, the counter will be in the same memory page. Um, well, if, if the state could not have been, uh, if we couldn't have used that technique and we had to use an if, then we would probably need to use a compiler directive, likely or unlikely. Um, that's it. Thank you very much.